Is there a way for EEG headsets to replace our keyboards and mice? Hi, my name is Diraj and I am the founder and CEO of QNeuro and I'm a medical neurologist by training. And I'm Port Horton, I'm the director of research at QNeuro and I'm a cognitive scientist. So this falls under systems called brain-computer interfaces. Generally the idea is wanting to take our brain activity directly to control things. Uh, and people have been working on this for, for quite a while and have had, actually had some success. People have made systems that can use uh, your brain's response to flashing lights to simulate a keyboard to type uh, or to use imagined uh, motions of your arms and legs to be able to move a cursor on a screen. So these systems do exist, but as for replacing keyboards and mice, you need to really hit a level where the total like rate of information needs to get pretty high. People are very good at using keyboards and mice for inputting things to systems quickly. And in general, brain-computer interfaces tend to be on the slow side, that since we're relying on measuring brain activity in a system that's already got a lot of ongoing activity, uh, it's we sometimes need several trials to several instances or a few seconds of data to try to measure these things. I tend to agree. It's the, the research that has been done in these areas is really with people with, um, for example, locked-in syndrome. It's a horrible situation, it's a horrible thing to, to happen, but it's essentially your, um, you know, your brain is working. It's working perfectly fine, but there's a, there's a point um, in the brainstem, which is basically the connection of your brain to the rest of your body, where there's a lesion there, there's a, there's a problem where um, then the, the, you, you can't express, you can't speak, you can't, the only thing is you can imagine is you can move your eyes. That's the only bit of voluntary control you have left in locked in syndrome. So those people that have chips implanted into their brain, which gives you a much higher resolution and, and then it takes a, a significant amount of training in order to be able to control things in, 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 a, in a particular manner. And for those, it's, it's, it's an amazing um, improvement. It's an amazing thing that they can now do that they yeah. weren't able to do before. But, you know, for, for more popular things like a keyboard and mouse, they work really well, yeah. right? Like that's, that's the thing. Um, a joystick works really well. Um, your ability, you know, you're, you're trained from the time you're, you're born to coordinate your, um, your hand movements um, and your fingers. That's why you have such high dexterity. And there's a tremendous amount of brain real estate that's attributed to being able to control those functions. There's not really a need to bypass that, right? It would be great, like, oh, I can just think of something and then it just appears on my screen or all of that kind of stuff. There's definitely a use for it, but we're not there yet. Um, whether we might be there someday, who never say never, right? But yeah. um, but we're not quite there yet. For more information on brain computer interfaces, click on the description box below. And if you've ever used a brain computer interface before, tell us about your experience. Did you find it intuitive? Did you find it frustrating? How did it go? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you'd like to see more like it, check out one of the links on the right of the screen, and please consider liking and subscribing the video. It helps us out.